What's up? It's Slugger Slugger, and this is In the DMs with Mask Gorilla. What is your relationship with the concept of death? Wow, that's a very hard-ass question. All right, um, I mean, I've always been interested in death. And I think every human is, you know, it's a fundamental part of life within itself. And I used to really be into the concept of God and the afterlife and trying to figure out what that meant. But um, as I've gotten older, I've just realized it doesn't matter how close you are with God or if you understand that shit, you're still going to die one day and do this and that. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, death is cool. Anyway. Hey Slug, my name is Miles. I'm from Victoria, Canada. Bloody, 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 blah. My questions are, when do you feel the most inspired to write music? And who is someone I could buy good beats off for a reasonable <laughs> price? Well, man, you can come to me. Email me, I'll send you my rates. They're very reasonable. Also, Nadar up here. He's got some reasonably <laughs> priced beats. Not no more. Uh, not no more. <laughs> Very unreasonable <laughs> priced beats. Um, I feel most inspired to write music. Like, I mean, that's what I do. Like, I mean, um, I've been doing it for like 15 years now, and uh, that's just what I do. It's not a, not really a um, question of inspiration. It's a question of just do I feel like, you know, working right now. And, um, you know, obviously, when I'm really fucked up, I get real creative, and uh, when you go through um, certain, like, life situations and shit, like, it'll definitely inspire lyrics, and so just, you know, pivotal life events really inspire me, like, even if they happened a few years ago, if I haven't, if I'm thinking about it, I might be inspired to write a song about whatever. <laughs> Any new songs coming out with Father soon? What are the rest of the plans for the rest of the year? Um, yeah, me and Fat actually, I moved out to um, LA and Fat moved out here a few months ago too. So me and him, I've been working on a few songs here and there um, produced by me and him and also by Melty Cannon. Um, haven't dropped them yet, but be on the lookout because probably gonna drop a single here pretty soon. And um, might even throw an EP out there, I don't know. No no concrete plans, but definitely. We've been working since I've moved out here, and yeah. So you'll, you'll, you'll um, hear some shit from us soon. How did you find your sound? Um, well, I mean, my, I've been, like I said, I've been doing music since I was 15 years old, so it's um, 14 years old, so it's been over 10 years now. Um, I started out playing in like, being the vocalist in a lot of metal bands, I've had like indie lo-fi surf rock projects. I've made like 8-bit music. Um, I really started making music with my bands and shit when I was like 14. And um, around that same time, I started making music on the computer just like, you know, just weird undefinable electronic music. Like I was inspired by like the Postal Service and a lot of like um, members and scene bands back then had like their like electronic side project that shit was really inspiring to me I didn't start making beats until I was about 17 though and um, I would just make beats for um, whatever rapper asked me for some just if they came across like my band camp or something heard my beats and I would send them to them so like sonically my music is kind of a culmination of like all the past work that I've done, whether it's um, being the vocalist in a math grind band or playing guitar and singing in a surf rock band or rapping, you know. And um, I don't know, I, I, I never really found my sound. It's like, it was, it was kind of always there in a sense. How many cigs do you smoke a day? <sighs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if, if I'm fucked up, I'll smoke a pack. But I try to smoke, like, half a pack. Keep it to half a pack a day. <laughs> it's, like, much better. <laughs> right. 
I know back before Awful you were a part of a band. Would you ever do that again? Your guitar work has always been very clutch, so I hope the blah, 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 okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I totally would. I've been wanting to be in a, I've been wanting to start like a punk or metal band like for years now, ever since I started rapping. The thing about rap is like, these concerts when you play a show like it's very fun and you're turning up and shit but there's really no spiritual aspect to it that it's it's not the same thing as like um working with someone else and being in sync with each other um like that being in the same rhythm with someone and creating music all on the spot right there with a few other people is something very tribalistic about it and it taps into to some like ancient evolutionary vestigial advantages that humans have but uh low-key me ned and ghost main are starting a metal band like sometime here soon so we're definitely gonna do that so if you're looking for some metal punk slugger be on the lookout for that would you let lil b fuck your bitch I mean, honestly, man, I wouldn't. Like, my <laughs> my girlfriend, is, I've been with my girlfriend for, like, over two years now, and she's, like, the love of my life and everything. We're basically married, so, like, you know, you asked me this a few years ago. I'd been like, yeah, obviously, no question. He can have any bitch that I have, you know, he can go for it. But <laughs> this this current bitch is, like, my bitch. My, I love that bitch. And, <laughs> No, I, I won't let Lil B fuck her. She wouldn't be down for it anyway. <laughs> what keeps you going every day? Good question. I have no idea. Um, do you have a favorite color? If so, what is it? No, I don't have a favorite color. I'm not five years old. All colors are cool. They're all useful for things, you know. And just colors or yeah no i don't have a favorite color what inspired your style and how did you make your 808 so unique ned can tell you that i taught his ass how to make a, a slapping ass 808 i'm not gonna tell him the, the, what you gotta do i'm not gonna tell yeah him. we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you that but there yeah i can't i can't tell you them. how i make the subs so <clears throat> slapping but just understand like half these producers that got slapping 808s learned it from good old slugger a hey, slug i really like your paintings could you speak a little on your creative process when it comes to your visual art maybe some of your inspirations yeah so um i am an art school dropout my major was painting so i went to scad um savannah college of art and design but the atlanta branch so i went to scad atlanta for about three years um always been into painting for a while um I mean, I've been doing music forever, but um, I was making more money with painting because, you know, unless you're popping, like, music is, is a money pit. You're not going to make any money off of it. So for a while, I thought I was going to be, like, a career painter until this music shit started popping off. And um, inspirations, you know, like, my favorite artists are... I, I really like the abstract expressionistic um, era of painting in the late 40s like Pollock, Mark Rothko, um, Jasper Johns, all very amazing. My favorite artist is probably Marcel Duchamp, who I like to, um, he's basically the base god of painting, or just of art. Like back in the 1910s, he would take, a, he took a urinal, set it on its side, um, wrote some shit on it, and called it a sculpture put it in the gallery and he would just do shit like that and that shit is like so based to me and he would also just like take a a broom and hang it up in the corner of the gallery and be like yeah it's a sculpture bitch so like i i mean i just love marcel duchamp just because of his punk rockness and um one of my favorite artists um why did you leave school well, I never wanted to go to school. Um, I just wanted to, right out of high school, I just wanted to start making music and I didn't care if I wasn't gonna make money off of it or whatever. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to make music. So my, my, but my parents were like, Chaz, you gotta go to college. So I was like, all right, well, if y'all are gonna make me go to college, I'm gonna go to art school for painting. And um, 
I don't know, man. I think I just stopped one semester and never went back. You know, I didn't drop out, drop out. You know, and I could I could go back whenever I wanted. But you know, getting a painting degree. Um, my plan was to go to school for four years, get my painting degree, and then go back to school for two years and get a master's and be a professor. And it's just too much fucking money, man. And then this like the flip is not good you know and um you toss up boy, man. Mm. the flip is not that good so i'll probably never go back to art school but i'll definitely keep painting and shit what's your favorite cartoon um probably just american cartoon adventure time um but i mean i'm hella into anime but i i can't name you my favorite my, one of my favorite animes is like fully Cooly. Evangelion, uh, Gurren Logan. Um, I like a lot of anime. I can't name the first, the, my favorite one though. What's your favorite song from Judas's Betrayal? So my new album, Judas's Betrayal and the Three Day Burial of Assaulted Slug, just came out like I don't know, like a month ago. My favorite song on there. Um, you know, it's always hard to pick a favorite anything. I don't like picking favorite things, but um, I think the song that I most resonate with on that album is um, this c song called Said, Said My Name. And um, it's not a hip hop song. I don't even know what you would call it. It's not really anything. Um, it kind of harkens back to my days as like, a, as just like some musician who was making weirdo electronic music like uncategorizable music and uh it's just no percussion in it and the first half is very like loud and um aggressive yet still melodic but the second half is like just a really cool composition thing that i'm really proud of it was basically like a musical flex like just to show people like yeah i can like compose a beautiful ass thing are you ever gonna come to Norway? Probably, I don't know. Get someone to bring me out there, I would love to. I have a passport now, I can do anything. What's your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card? I don't know, I was never into Yu-Gi-Oh oh, like that. Yeah, but I don't remember. Yeah, I guess Blue Eyes, White Dragon, he was a badass. He was badass in the anime. Have you ever been in trouble with the law? Yeah, of course. I mean, like, who hasn't? If you if you, if you're cool, you've been locked up, right? So yeah, I um, <laughs> I uh, was really fucked up one night when I think I was 19. Um, nodded off while I was driving, ran my car off the side of the road. Um, like totaled my truck. Um, if I had like ran off the road like a hundred feet down, I would have gone off a fucking cliff and probably died. But as like I did that, as I ran off the road like, and I hit into a stop sign, a cop like was passing me, and so he like pulled over, got out of the car, and came running over to me like, "What the fuck are you doing? What's wrong with you?" And I was like, oh, whatever. And um, I was so fucked up that he was like, have you been drinking? And I was like, nah, but uh, I've been like snorting pills and uh, smoking weed. And he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, can you step out of the car for a second? I'm like, sure, dude. And he handcuffed me and <laughs> brought me. I was in jail for like a few hours, but after that I went to rehab, which is basically being locked up. And then I was on probation for two years, which I fucked that up. And then... Um, was smoking weed like heavily all through my probation, which is something you shouldn't do. And uh, yeah, I got locked up for like a month, um, just off failure for or um, violation of probation BOP. That was the last time I really got really fucked up with the law. This one time I had to go to New York to pay a weed ticket. Um, so if I didn't pay this ticket, I would have a warrant for me out in New York. And so I was like, I'm always in NYC playing shows. Like I can't have a warrant out there. So I flew to New York to pay for a court hearing and I had to pay a $10 weed ticket, like a $150 flight out there. <laughs> yeah, all for a $10 weed ticket. Um, how old were you when like you first started doing? drugs like what's the story there um to 
come clean, I was straight edge, like, because I was really into the hardcore scene, so I was, like, bumping, like, Casey Jones, Kids Like Us, and Comeback Kid, like, a bunch of straight edge bands, and, you know, when I was that young, I was just impressionable, like, middle school, early high school, but uh, I started smoking weed when I was 17, and it was all downhill from there. I think I snorted my first bomb painkiller when I was 18, and all downhill from there. Do you plan on quitting drugs when you get older? I want you to live long, bro. Really, man, I feel like I've lived this long because I get high. Like, I, uh, um, I've gotten clean numerous times, and I just haven't liked it. I just don't like it. I just don't like being sober, and... I feel like I would have killed myself by now if I had just been sober. So, really, man, like drugs have saved my life they fucked it up definitely i'm not gonna say they're like a good thing or anything but i'm gonna i will tell you that there's like a reason why i do it it's it's not like i just like getting high it's definitely some it's definitely some existential shit going on but um i mean i feel like that like getting high keeps me going sometimes and it's a uh, catch-22 of course and i would never i would never tell someone like hey you should start getting high if you're depressed like i would never do that to anyone it's just it's just a, a fucked up way for me that it works you know like that's how i keep going and i would like i said i would never recommend that shit to anyone but it's just what i do and you shouldn't be influenced by me to do it or not to do it or whatever you shouldn't even listen to what the fuck i'm saying you know hey slug huge fan have a question do you still paint I don't do it as regularly as I should because I don't have all my supplies. They're still, at, like, in Atlanta. My dad's holding on to them. But, I mean, um, when I go over to Father's house, like, his girlfriend, Dash, um, is into arts and crafts and shit. Like, she's a Pisces, so we're kind of on the same wave. So I'll do, like, little things with her and then sell them. But I need to get back doing it regularly. Why slug out of all things? LOL. Why you ain't want to be snail Christ? I've gotten a few questions, so I'll combine them. Slug Christ. What does slug Christ mean? So, a slug. Anywhere a slug goes, it leaves a trail of slime behind them, kind of like leaving his mark, leaving a trail. Uh, uh, it doesn't even. It doesn't matter if. When you see a slug going across that driveway, man, that might be the last time he makes that trail because that driveway is huge to him and it's going to take him like 15 hours to go across the driveway. So he might dry out on that sidewalk. But regardless, he still left his mark and it doesn't matter if the rain washes that mark away or not. Um, he still left a mark that someone is going to see or something is going to see that's going to impact someone. Christ... Um, was like a just I was raised in a Southern Baptist home you know I grew up about 30 minutes north of, north of Atlanta in this um, place called Cherokee County and uh, if you've ever seen the show Squid Billies on uh, Adult Swim they'll say in the opening they're like in the foothills of the North Georgia mountains and that's exactly where I grew up um, so I was raised like in a very strict Southern Baptist household and I never I never um, got anything out of church and I knew at a very young age you know I, I lied to myself a long time about Jesus like you know just being like yeah he's real I'm gonna keep believing in him because I don't want to burn in hell forever that's not true I don't want to do that um, so when I was thinking and I had called myself Slug Christ like in my other music like when I was making um, electronic music just under my name, Chaz Bill, like, I had an album called Slug Christ, and that was always just kind of like a AKA I went by or whatever. And um, so I, I used the, the surname Christ because it was like the most punk rock thing I could think of. Like, there's nothing more, um, there's nothing more worse than, you know, proclaiming yourself Christ, like the Son of God. And uh, so it was, it was just something that um, I wanted to do. And I like the juxtaposition of slug, something small, insignificant, disgusting, somewhat useless next to, next to Christ, which is beautiful, perfect, 
god you know and i liked i liked the duality of um like insignificance and um significance so that's kind of short long story short that's kind of what slow cries mean and just because that's what it means to me like doesn't mean that's what it means you know like whatever you get out of it is is justified like and just because I get a certain thing out of it doesn't mean you'll get the same thing out of it which is how all wor art works you know and I wish people were just more conscious of that like there's never a right answer for what a piece of art means what's your favorite war movie I like all the Vietnam movies like Apocalypse Now um, Platoon I don't know if it's considered a war movie but it's got um, th that's an aspect in it it's this movie called Jacob's Ladder which inspired the making of Silent Hill 2, so that's a very dope movie. A question. Word. I remember one time on Twitter, you were like, I thought it was really interesting. You are talking about how it's easy for like a new artist to kind of like copy a style. Yeah. But for like, like say like someone to copy your style, it's easy. But for you to get to that point, it took like, years of experimenting and like right so i don't even know how to phrase that into a question no i know what you're saying what um like, what like thoughts on? nowadays i feel like the biggest artists are just a uh, um culmination of every current rap trend going on so like they're gonna rap like i am selling some drugs in the trap they're gonna be doing that they're gonna be like oh yeah oh swag like and there's there's no originality to it and it's almost like like i get hated on like so much because i don't sound like other people i feel like a lot of these kids like if you're not doing what everyone else is doing it's almost like your work isn't viable as an artist it's like no one wants to listen to you you're not rapping in triplets or you're not rapping like you sound cuban and shit like that you know and um also like uh, artists like future has been rapping for decades at this point and the shit he is doing now like um yeah people just hear it and they don't do any soul searching artistically and they just grab this grab that grab that from this artist that and just push it all together and it becomes them and there's nothing original about them but they'll get millions of views on their um, videos and shit. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's always been like that, you know, with whatever musical trends like disco or something like that. You know, these were all just musical trends that people jumped on. And however, for hip hop, I think it's m more apparent now than it ever has been. Um, do you think you'll ever blow up to the level of these other rappers that are going mainstream? Or do you think that you being a real artist will keep you at a certain level in the underground? That's a good question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, I understand what he's saying. Like that, that's kind of what I was just talking about too. Like if you sound unique and creative, it's, and you're not doing all these trends, then you are gonna be pigeonholed and you might stay at a certain level then again i i'm not even sure that if i want to get bigger like i want to make more money but i don't want to i don't want to get more famous because like even just now like the shit that i deal with is sometimes so weird to me that like i can't even handle it and like my friends who are bigger than me like I'll say shit to him like dude I don't know how you can like handle this shit because like I can barely handle the shit that some people say to me and it, it it's not shit negative shit that people say to me it's it's shit like slug I want to kill myself I have a pile of heroin in front of me I think I'm just gonna shoot it all up and they'll DM me that or tweet me that shit and it's just like out of nowhere all of a sudden you become someone's like shepherd like you become and they think you have all the answers when really man i don't know what the fuck is going on any more than anyone else you know like and it, like you you can't look towards people for help like that like um and you can't put that on other people and if anything 
the only thing I can tell you, like, if you're looking for answers from me, like, just look at, for it in the music, you know, because anything that I'm thinking about or I'm going through, any philosophical, existential questions I'm struggling with, like, I bring them up in my music. Like, that's 90% of my lyrics is, um, like, existential issues. But, like, to be even more bigger and have even more people looking at me, like, I have the answers and I'm their shepherd, like, I can't even imagine it because it's already so crazy. And I'm not, I'm not dissing anyone like that because I remember feeling younger and wanting to talk to, like, the guitarist in my favorite band or whatever and ask him, like, how do you do life? Like, how you live and shit and it's I understand it you know when you listen to these people you you do get a you do get a idea of what they're like and everything but you can't you can't expect some uh, just another human even though they have whatever amount of twitter followers they're still just a human any much as any other human and you probably got some shit figured out more so than they do so that shit is just it's scary and i i that's why i don't want to get bigger you know let me let me do one more let me do in the song scrape me off the pavement are you singing about an actual girl or one you you just made up <laughs> <laughs> no all those songs are about an actual girl my current girlfriend like and they're all like i don't ever say shit in songs that um, you know, I just imagined, like, everything is at least based off of a real-life occurrence or anything like that, so, no fakery going on, if I say, I love that bitch, and I hate her, that's real shit, and there is a bitch that I love and hate.